Welcome to West Coast Grandma. Well, I am hoping that I'm going to show you a successful baking of sourdough bread. This is my 10th try. I'm trying to figure out a system because this sourdough seems to rule my life. So this is seven o'clock at night and I am mixing up my starter. I just added the flour. I'm adding half a cup of water. I use my little um, chopstick. I'm gonna stir it up and I'm gonna let this ferment overnight because I want it nice and bubbly and I'm gonna be making my sourdough first thing in the morning. So I am gonna take you with me on this journey over the next, hmm, let's see, day and a half and we'll see if my sourdough loaf is gonna turn out perfect. Morning. Now I'm back to mix up my uh, sourdough. So it's eight o'clock in the morning. So like I say, this whole thing is going to be to try to get some kind of grip on a system for making sourdough bread that doesn't totally interfere with the day. So I have my digital scale and I have my bowl and I'm going to put it onto grams. There we go. And then I'm going to hit tear and get it to zero. Now I'm gonna put in 700 grams of white flour. Now I figure out this is the easiest way to do it, just to keep adding it. And after every ingredient, you just tear it back to zero, put the next ingredient in. So this works really well. Alrighty, so this is a recipe for two loaves. So let's see what we can do here. So I want 700 white. I just totally find that sourdough, it's not easy. I've had a really hard time getting a good loaf of bread and the last one was really good. So I'm hoping that I can do the double loaf now. So there's 700. I'm just going to make this up to a thousand. This is whole wheat flour. A little bit more. I also find having all the ingredients ready when you have your digital scale is the easiest. And you can just add everything all at one time. You're not running to the cupboard looking for ingredients and then having to start over. So there we are, a thousand. And what I need is 20 grams of sea salt. Alrighty. So that's going to take me to... 24. There we go. Now I'm going to tear it back to zero again. And I am going to add my water. So let's get a cup and we need warm water. And the recipe calls for 700 grams of warm water, about 72 degrees. Okay, one, I think, here. Yeah, water's heavy. There we go, a little bit more. There we are, 700, gram, 700 grams of water. And now I'm gonna tear back to zero again and 200 grams of starter. Now, I may have made a mistake with my starter. I fed it and I didn't take any out and I fed it again. So I hope that I haven't messed up my starter, but anyway, we're gonna see. It's, like I say, it's tricky. It doesn't look as bubbly as it should. So I want 200 grams, so there we go, 200 grams. All right, so that is everything there. I'm gonna take it off my scale, get my fancy little dough whisk, and I'm just gonna mix all this up. And once I get it uh, mixed, I'm just gonna let it sit for about uh, 20, 30 minutes, just so that um, the flour can absorb the water. It takes a little while for that to happen, especially because I'm using some whole wheat flour in here. Mix it all around. And if it looks like you should add more water, don't. 
Um, I have done that mistake and then it's so wet and sticky, it's hard to do anything with. So we don't really need to add any more water. If you follow the recipe, which we did, there we go. Still got a somewhat of a sore shoulder when it comes to mixing things like this that's hard. There, I think we're all mixed in. I don't see really any more flour. So we're gonna get all this off. And all I'm going to do is cover it with a wet tea towel, which I have ready. And I'm going to let it sit for 30 minutes. And we'll come back and we'll do the next step. I'll show you how I do the stretch and folds. And we'll do a few of those this morning and then let it sit all afternoon. So um, 30 minutes and we'll come back. Okay, it's been a half an hour. I've got my dough back. It is now, it has soaked up all the water. So I'm gonna wet my fingers because I found that really is true. It doesn't stick so much. And I'm gonna kind of pull away from the sides. I watched a few videos and this last time seemed to be the right way to do it. So, and then to stretch and fold, you're just gonna go like that and you're gonna keep folding it over. And a stretch and fold means going a quarter of a turn around so you've completed a whole circle and you do that a couple of times. So there we go. And this is to do with the gluten. It gets the gluten activated and then it turns into a nice shiny ball in the end. So we're gonna go around. Now we're gonna do a series of stretch and folds every 30 minutes and we're gonna do that three times. So this is sort of a time consuming part, um, but I'm gonna be making some other things in the kitchen and getting organized for my day. So this seems like a, a pretty good system right now to do the stretch and folds first thing in the morning. So there we are. So we're just gonna continue around. And it's already coming away from the side of the bowl. It doesn't seem to take a lot and it starts to actually look like a proper loaf of bread. Ah, I'm not an expert, but the only way you're ever gonna be an expert or get to be an expert is to dive in there and give it a try. See, look at that already. It's starting to look a little more like better looking dough. So yeah, so there we are. That's our first series of stretch and folds. I'm going to put my wet tea towel over it again, and I'm going to let it sit for another 30 minutes. I'm going to do this three times, so then I'll come back and we'll do the next step. Okay, we're back again. We're going to do our last series of stretch and folds. So let's take this out here. Oh, I've got to wet those fingers. It does make a difference. Alrighty, so we're going to do our same stretching and folding. And once I get this done, and you can do the stretch and folds as many times you want um, in the first few hours. But once I get this uh, done to my liking, which is probably going to be just this time, I'm going to get it set up for the bulk ferment. That's when the sourdough uh, gets time to work and rise and we're gonna put it back in that bowl and let it double in size. So this is where you can leave it. I'm gonna be going out after go to work and I'm just gonna leave it and do it when I come home later on tonight. So this is, this is definitely the time I'm finding better for me. So there we are, we're kinda of shaping it into a ball. Seems like there's quite the art to doing that. I haven't quite learned that yet, but I will. So, I think we'll do a little bit more stretching and folding. Another way that um, I've noticed they do the stretch and folds, different people, is they kind of flatten it out on the counter and you start at the top and you fold it over almost like you were doing a braid. And then you take the bottom and fold it up so that you're always keeping all those folds to the one side or to the one, like to the top here. Because then I'm going to get it all nicely into that bowl and I'm going to pop that back in my bowl. 
So for the bulk ferment, I don't uh, put the wet tea towel over top because I find that it just dries out and you don't want it to be dry. You want the moisture, otherwise it's gonna get crusty. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put plastic wrap over this and I'm gonna set it uh, not too close to my wood stove, but close-ish so that at least it's warm. And then we'll come back later on. We want to go double in size. So it should be pretty well filling this bowl later on. So we'll come back at the end of the bulk ferment. Well, I just got home from work at five o'clock and my dough, as you can see, has doubled, which is what it's supposed to do. So I'm carefully gonna get this out of my bowl, which could be a little tricky here. We wanna be a little bit careful, not destroy all those nice bubbles that are formed. So let's see if we can get this out here. There we go. Wow. Oh, it's almost rolling off the counter. Okay, let's get a little bit of a floured surface here and we'll try to roll this back. Okay, there we go. So I'm just carefully going to cut it in half because like I said, this was enough for two loaves. And I'm just gonna take my loaf and gently roll it around. There we go. I'll leave that one there. Well, oh, let's pull the sleeves up. Okay. So I'm gonna turn it over, and now I'm just gonna fold it all over again, bringing everything up to the center. Oh, look at the big bubbles in there. There we go. Carefully turn it over and try to just tighten it. Apparently you sort of pull it towards you on the counter and that tightens the surface. Okay, there's one. Now I have my Benetton basket ready here, right there. And I'm just sprinkling rice uh, flour in there because the rice flour um, it's not supposed to let the bread dough stick and it doesn't seem to so I think that is probably the best thing. You can just put a lined uh, cloth in there as well. So just lay it in there. So there we go. Now we're going to take our nice ball that we've made and put the top side down. There we go. Now I'm just going to do the same with my other one. Turn it over. I'm gonna fold it all in again, folding it in on itself. And there we go. Carefully turn it over and again, sort of pull it towards yourself so it stretches the top. Alrighty, I am there. And now I'm just gonna put it in the other Benetton basket and then we're going to be pretty well good. Again, I'm putting that nice top facing down into the basket like that. Okay, so all I'm going to do now is put these in a plastic bag. Um, I have this one because it fit. Um, there we are. And I'm just going to put a twist tie on this. Like so. And these are going to go in the fridge. And then I'm going to take it out first thing in the morning and bake them. So that's when we're going to have our big test as to whether or not these are gonna turn out. So the scoring comes tomorrow morning after we dump them out of the basket. But for now, that was all there was to this little section. So you could do it just while you're getting dinner ready. You could just do your last little forming of those uh, nice 
balls for each loaf. There we go, just like that. And I am just gonna place these in the fridge. Now the bags are to keep the moisture in. So, because again, we don't want the dough to dry out. So there we are. They're gonna go into my fridge and I'll be back first thing in the morning. Good morning and I am back again with my two ready to bake sourdough loaves. So all I did is took them out of the fridge. Now I took them out of the fridge at quarter past seven and turned my oven on and put the Dutch oven in because it has to heat up for pretty close to an hour at 460. So I am just gonna take my uh, silicone brush here and just take some of this rice flour off. I don't want quite that much. And I've let these loaves sit because I'm gonna score them and I now wanted a little bit of a crust on there. So let's just sweep those off. Now I am doing an experiment. I always bake my sourdough loaf in the Dutch oven, but I have two and we need to head out soon to our granddaughter's soccer game. So I am gonna try to cook two together. So I am gonna put a pan of water into my oven. So I have a cast iron frying pan there and I'm gonna fill that with water, boiling water, like that. And I am gonna pop that into my oven underneath my Dutch oven. There we go. So that is hopefully gonna make my second loaf puff up the way it's supposed to. So now I'm just gonna score uh, the top of the loaf. So I have a razor blade and on a sideways motion, I'm gonna go in a good quarter to a half inch. There we go. And I'm gonna make a couple more lines. I'm not an expert at doing this yet again either, but there's one. I have the actual tool I've forgotten what it's called right here, but I actually find holding this right now until I get better at it, the scoring seems to be a little better. There we go. So all scored. So my cast iron pan is ready and I am going to lift the first one in. There we go. And I've got one of these cool little mats underneath. So we're just going to lift it in and pop that in there. And the lid is back on. And the other one, I'm just going to leave open on this tray. And we're going to see how that steam works at making that rise. There we go. I'm going to put the timer on for 20 minutes and then we'll come back and see what they look like. We're going to take the lid off and let them cook for an extra 20 minutes. Whoa, look at that. The timer just went. I'm just going to pop this lid off. Whoa, pop them back in and set the timer for another 15, 20 minutes. I'll just watch them closely. Here we come to our big test. We're gonna see how these two loaves are gonna work out. So the timer, 10 seconds. So I did turn the oven down to, to about uh, 460. So you leave it in at 480 for 20 minutes and turn it down. So here we are. Oh. There's one. turned out really well and it didn't make any difference the one that is not in the Dutch oven so there you go if you don't have a Dutch oven it is nine o'clock in the morning so I think that we fit it in pretty good to our normal routine we were planning to leave at 9 15 
that was a pretty good system. So if you're looking for a way to bake your uh, sourdough loaf and fit it into your life so that the sourdough doesn't rule your life, try the timing that I did here. Um, I just gotta show you this close up. Look at that. Not a quite as good score as I would have hoped. I probably could have gone a little deeper. I'm still learning that one. It's very tricky sourdough. And there's the other one. Good, so hope you enjoyed that. Hope that that helped you out trying to fit sourdough baking into your everyday life. Um, give it a try. This is my try number 10 and I'm getting there. So give it a try. West Coast Grandma is signing out.